Hi, this is Heather Bradley, the director of the Center for Nonprofit Resources, and I'm so excited to be hanging out today with Ridgely Goldsboro. He's the creator of the Avatar Formula. Welcome, Ridgely. Thank you so much, Heather. I am excited to be here with you as well, and all the fine people that are out there. Great. So we're going to jump right in. What is it that gets you so excited about the Avatar Formula? Well, see, no one does anything without a belief. You don't get out of bed in the morning if you don't believe it's better than staying in your pun next to your pillow. You don't eat unless you believe that it's going to fill your stomach. You don't go to work unless you believe that you're going to be rewarded. And at the end of the day, we are the sum total manifestation of our belief system. A belief manifests in physical form as an avatar. It's the avatar of what you stand for. Who are you? Why do you think the way you think? Why do you speak the way you speak? Why do you do everything that you do? And most people don't know what that is. And therefore, it's like something is running you. It's running your programming. It's running the way you see the world. It's running who you choose as a partner. And you don't know it. What if you did? How empowering would that be to be reintroduced to your truest self, the essence of who you are, and learn how to use that for the world, learn how to be, have a better business, a better charity, a better family, a better relationship with your friends because you now know who you are and are empowered by that. So yeah, it's pretty easy for me to get excited. All you have to do is ask the question. I'm on a roll here for the next 20 minutes telling the world why knowing the avatar of your why you do what you do is so critical. And oh, by the way, here's what's really cool. Every avatar has a strength and a weakness. And because we're in the millennial age and we love gamification, we term those superpowers and kryptonites. So let me ask you, Heather, you want to know your superpower? Absolutely. Yeah. And would you like to know the kryptonite of everybody else that works with you? Just kidding. There you oh, go. everybody else is sure. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. So to have that knowledge means if I know what my strength is, I can play to my strength. If I know what my challenge or kryptonite is, I can minimize my kryptonite. Think about this from a, a perspective of your whole team. If you knew what the superpower of everybody on your team was and the kryptonite of everybody, you could help each other play to the strength, take care of the kryptonite, everybody unites, everybody understands each other better, and you have a much more united team. Think about it. Most people spend two years to learn that Susie over here lives in a two-bedroom condo. Uh, she has a golden retriever with her husband, and they're thinking about having kids, and, what, and that's all they ever know. What I'm saying is that everyone that attends this event that hangs out to figure out what their avatar is, is going to know more about their colleagues than they ever knew they could know in one day. One mm -hmm. day, just like that. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. We're excited that you're coming to town. So um, from the broader perspective, how are you seeing nonprofits leverage the way advantage? So what happens is there are a nonprofit, and then there's another nonprofit, and then there's another one, and then there's another, right? And somehow you have to create a connection between those people who are going to support your nonprofit. And the greater the connection, the bigger the support is going to be. So what people want to know about the nonprofit is what do you stand for? What do you care about? What do you believe? What are you about? Not what products do you have? That's secondary. People care about why you do what you do first, and what you do is just the product that you offer. It's the service. It's whatever mm -hmm. that particular nonprofit is all about. So if we have the ability to express to the world what we believe and what we stand for, we're going to create a much better connection with those who currently support us, which means they're going to give us more support, and with the world at large who resonate with what we believe and what we stand for, and therefore we're going to establish better connections with them to bring them in to become supporters of the nonprofit. So on both levels, both existing uh, supporters and with the public at large that could become supporters, we have the ability to establish an instant connection. When you do that, obviously the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. And we know that you've done a lot of research. So when nonprofits follow this formula, what are the results that you're seeing? So the first thing is that 
I want to use a word that I find is critical in today's marketplace, and that is simplification. We live in a chaotic world. We live in a world where input, feedback, marketing, offers are, th are flying at everybody all the time. When you know what you stand for and what you believe, you can make it really simple. So imagine a website that has expressions of this. Here's what, what you really want on your website is for somebody to land and go like this. Ah, oh, wow. It's simple. I can digest it. It makes me feel good. It resonates with my belief system, and therefore, I'm loving this. You make them feel good first, and then they think about what they're going to do to support you. So feeling first, decision, to, decision justified second, right? So to the extent that we can do that, that we can work with organizations and help them get that simplicity, get that feeling-based message, what I call limbic messaging, that comes from the limbic part of the brain, front and center, of everything that a nonprofit does, then obviously not only is everybody going to feel better, but you're going to get much more support. You're going to see a lot more people that come in saying, hey, I love that website. That was so great. Uh, and I'll give you an example of a commercial, uh, a, a commercial enterprise that I, I just did something for two days ago because so, it's such a clear example. I work with them to figure out what are their belief statements. What do they stand for? A belief statement is nothing other than why you do what you do. You do why you do what you do is because of what you believe, right? And you know, all, there's a it's a construction company, and this big old construction company is like the same as every other big old construction company. You go there, and there's a bunch of beautiful buildings that they built. Well, they're your construction company. That's what you do is build buildings. So what we did is said, no, no, no. Let's just change that. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a website with one single building and a beautiful sunset, and it says, we believe in changing skylines. Now that is cool. And when you do that in the nonprofit sector where people are already predisposed to helping and supporting, then you give people that feeling when they land on your site, when they look at a brochure, when they get anything from you, they have that feeling first, then you're going to stand out among all other equally positioned nonprofits, and you're gonna do much better. So my role is to come up and do as much as I can, give as much as we possibly can in information, the process itself, so that those who are there at our event are going to gain tremendous benefit from it, and then they can take those deliverables right back to their own uh, entities, work with their team to make it even better, and the the thing that I love is the impact is instantaneous. This is not a, oh, let's see how this builds over the course of time. No, you change your mess messaging, you make it limbic based, and everybody's going, to, wow, that's amazing. And sometimes they don't even know why it's amazing. It just feels better. It just feels good to be there on that site and go, man, I, there's just something about this. Just something about this is just different. And I look forward to showing tons of examples and having a great time with some fabulous people who are out there to change the world. Great. Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're excited to host. So, so anyone, anyone who's interested in attending the Y Workshop with Ridgely on Thursday, March the 2nd, it's at the Kent Branch Library, just visit our website, www.c4npr.org, and register. We'll save you a seat, and we'll see you next week, Ridgely. I so look forward to it.